This is what's coming up this week. Coming up this week on Tulip TV. Tom Bywood is in Edmonton at the Dutch Market. We visit the Cantos Music Foundation in Calgary, talk to Dutch growers in Regina, pay a visit to the Rocky Awards in Banff, and continue our series of Biking Through Holland. <laughs> This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. So Katja, what is Tom up to this week? This week Tom Bijboot visits the Dutch market in Edmonton. This is the lineup for the croquette and the herring. Hi there, this is Tom Byfoot in Edmonton, Alberta, and I'm reporting from the Dutch Market. And the Dutch Market is organized every year on the Saturday before Mother's Day by the Dutch Canadian Center, one of the biggest Dutch clubs in all of North America. And we've got herring, we've got croquettes, we've got a barrel organ, uh, and we've got lots and lots of stalls, a number of Dutch stores, and we're having a wonderful time out here. to John Westerbahn and John where are you from? Well I've been born in Holland of course and I'm from Westlock. Westlock Alberta how far is that from here? Uh, at about an hour driving up to north. Okay you came all this way for the Dutch market? Uh, sure. And what what do you come for especially what's the best part here? Uh, all the things I like flowers, wooden shoes and I have my lady with me and she likes drops Salt, salt uh, candy, that is, right? Salt and sweet, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, one last uh, question. Uh, how long have you been in Canada? Three and a half years. And what do you like most about Canada? I don't like something in Canada. I love the whole country. I love Canada. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. What brings me out here? The, um Dutch community, I guess, but also my my store that I'm representing here with the with the with the kram with the stand, and of course, yeah, with with my bakery. So been up all night baking and sell here all day. But I love love the people. It's it's so much fun the interaction and yeah. So you haven't been to bed yet? I haven't been to bed, and the funny part is my wife is due any day. So I told her don't don't phone me today. But yeah, but uh, tonight I'll sleep very well. Oh, congratulations! So so you have a store here in uh, in Edmonton? Yes, I do. I have a bakery and and Dutch deli, of course, for six years now. So uh, yeah, it's 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 going very well. It's a lot of work, but a lot of satisfaction. Yeah. And and what kind of stuff do you sell? What do you sell most? Mostly the Dutch imports, but yeah, a lot of Dutch pastries, which are uh, rare here in Edmonton, and um, yeah, and, and some good heavy, heavy uh, European breads also. Yeah. Oh, and you were a baker back in Holland as well? Yeah, I had my four years schooling in Holland, so I could almost be a minister. But uh, but yeah, I had my schooling in Holland and um, have a, have a Dutch bakery here. It came for sale about um, six years ago now, so uh, yeah, and it's been going very well. No regrets? No regrets. No, I'll do it all over again. Yeah, for sure. you 
out here? Why did you come to the market? Well, I belong to the Dutch Canadian Centre for many, many, many years. And usually I volunteer, but not today. And my family was out and the grandchildren were out and it's just fun. It's a beautiful day. Is, is it always this, this nice weather? Not always. No, not always. But, uh, you know, we come for the herring and croquettes. What, what, what do you like best about the market? I meet a lot of people I haven't seen for a long time. You know, you meet people and like to sit outdoors and have a snack and just, just uh, gezellig. You are working inside, aren't you, Henry? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we're lucky. We've been able to get a table inside for, hey, since 1985, right? Okay. So, uh, 27 years. And the first, uh, I forget now, 15, 20 years, at least 15, we had a market in the spring and the fall, right? Okay. So, uh, I think I've given away something like 50 tickets at the market. Yeah, yeah, let me quickly explain. Now, Henry runs a travel agency here in Edmonton, uh, Alberta. Uh, it's called? Butte Travel Service. And they raffle off a ticket to Amsterdam every market, right? Yeah. So next Saturday, uh, before Mother's Day uh, in 2013, make sure you're here and you have a chance of winning a trip to Amsterdam from Butte Travel. Hey Dolph, how many years have you been coming to the market? About uh, 25 years. Okay. At minimum 25 years, yeah. And, and what brings you out here? What do you like so much about it? Uh, what I like is the Dutch atmosphere in general. You meet here people that you have, have not seen for years. You, you know, you, 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 you cannot, you can have friendships, but you cannot have, be friends with everybody. So then certain people you know, and then you meet them here at the markets. So, and, so it's like a reunion a little bit? Yeah, more or less. And then, you know, I like Dutch cheese and I like a croquette. You know how that goes. So have you had your croquette or your cheese yet? Yeah, I had my croquette. I had my, we bought the cheese anyway, and uh, and I like the, the the pastries, the Dutch pastries made by a Dutch baker, delicious. So and then all those people that I have known through the radio, I have known so many people, and you meet them here. I cannot. Oh, so you mentioned mentioned the radio. What's what's this with the radio? Well, the radio. I did a Dutch radio program for uh, about 25 years, and uh, we uh, we played Dutch music and we cracked a Dutch joke, and we had. Uh, various uh, Dutch people uh, supporting us because we were volunteers. We couldn't pay for that program. So is the program still going, Adolf? Uh, the program is going. Uh, Charlie uh, Tseng does the program on 101.7 and he does it for one hour from 12 till 1 every Saturday morning. Okay, that's great. And there's a huge uh, Dutch community in Edmonton, isn't there? Very big. Uh, from what I remember when I did a radio program uh, in and around Edmonton, there were at the minimum about 45,000 Dutch or from Dutch descent. Wow, that is amazing. Well, thanks for talking to us, Dolph. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I have appreciated that and I appreciate your, uh, your Hollandse Grand. I appreciate and Dutch. Terrific. That is a terrific magazine. Every Dutch or people that are related to Dutch should read that program. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this was not a setup, I swear. <laughs> So, uh, what brings you out here? The Dutch food. And you're wearing a Dutch soccer sh sh uh, shirt. Do you support the Dutch soccer team? Um, I used to. <laughs> Not anymore? No. Can you tell me why? I don't know. gentleman asked me to help out so I hope I did a good job with this film so anyway thank you very much and uh, touch scenes this is Tom Byfoot reporting for Dutch the magazine and Tulip TV this program is sponsored by Dutch the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people at home and abroad As you know by now, Tulip TV regularly features cultural issues such as the arts and music. In Calgary, Masabedi managed to visit the Cantos Music Foundation, which is a new museum which features keyboard instruments in particular. 
During his tour there, he was led around by a very, very interesting character who actually managed to play most of those instruments there. Here's the clip. incredible how this collection has evolved from um, actually being something that accompanied the Calgary International Organ Festival to being uh, this massive collection of keyboard instruments, acoustic and electronic, and we are now evolving into not just a keyboard collection, but the Na Canada's National Music Centre. So we will celebrate these wonderful instruments that we have, but also Canadiana in general. Well, this translates roughly to uh, Tempus Pecunia Est, Time is Money. And sometimes I get people from Britain here and they always know and a little while ago a man was like, oh, I think that's the wrong conjugation. And so apparently there should be an extra E here. So I apologize for our bad Latin grammar. <laughs> when I press a key, we've got this lever that comes up with little tangents. And it stays in contact with the string so you can actually do some really nice vibrato. Music Center's mandate is to promote the love, sharing, and understanding of music. And currently we do that in this space through a wide variety of programs. We have school programs for children of all ages, often that correlate to the Alberta school curriculum. So we've chosen to teach math through music, or to teach music through math. Uh, we have a number of seniors programs, and then we have a lot of programs for adults. So we've got performances regularly in our space downstairs. We have an association with the Calgary Folk Fest, and Calgary Folk Fest boot, boot Camp is held here. We have a constant stream of artists coming through who give workshops and performances and lectures. In fact, this past week we had a professional hurdy-gurdy player come through with his two sons and give a performance and demonstration on the hurdy-gurdy. So when I lived in Europe, I toured around, to, I went around to see a lot of different musical instrument collections. They're quite common in Europe and they have incredible collections. But I found oftentimes that everything was behind stanchions. There would be uh, placards telling you about the instruments, but you couldn't really hear the instruments, you couldn't perform them, you couldn't play them. So what is really special about the National Music Center is that it is a living collection. Instruments are meant to be played and we love allowing the public to engage with the instruments. We're quite careful about conservation. So we do keep our very fragile instruments behind glass. Uh, we try to ensure that there is no food and drink in the gallery because that's really what can cause the most damage. But musical instruments are very durable. They're meant to last. And as long as they're maintained carefully, uh, actually playing helps them to stay in shape. noticed, uh, we're, we've outgrown the space that we have here. We've got instruments on shelves, we have instruments in the basement. We really need more space to showcase our instrument collection. But I think that Cantos, now known as the National Music Centre, has also outgrown its uh, outgrown the space in terms of its scope and we want to be more than just a collection of world-class keyboard instruments. I think our goal is to um, showcase all aspects of Canadian music, which is why we've chosen the name the National Music Centre. So the King Eddie Hotel as shown in this artist's rendering here, was the center of Canadian, or the center of Calgary jazz and blues performance for a long time. It's a very historic location. We have plans to restore the King Eddie and to build a complex around it that will be known as the National Music Center. <laughs> Thank you.
Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Welcome to Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. My name is Tim Van Dyvendijk and my parents immigrated from Holland just shortly after the war in 1953. And they originally came from Krimpen Delek and Krimpen Nijssel, close to the Rotterdam area. And when they, obviously like most Dutch immigrants at that time, they came over by the boat, landed in Halifax and then took the train all the way to Saskatchewan. Uh, they worked in a few different communities throughout Saskatchewan and then eventually ended up in Saskatoon where, with the help of the Canadian government, started a nursery in a little town called Sutherland uh, just out of Saskatoon. And over the years that business has grown and many children later we've all gone into the business just like most Dutch families, one generation after another. And back in 2005 my wife and I saw this opportunity in Regina, Saskatchewan and we moved to Regina and took over this business, just like my father took over an existing business back in the 50s. And uh, we definitely love here in Regina. We try to continue buying plants from Holland and work with other Dutch growers and other Dutch nurserymen. And all that has really influenced our business and, and made us the strong business that we are today. We order uh, plants from a Dutch auction in Burnaby, British Columbia from the United Flower Growers, and a lot of them are uh, Dutch growers, Dutch uh, greenhouse growers, nursery growers, and we order a lot of plant material from that uh, United Flower Growers, and we do it via the internet. And so we don't actually have to be in the actual forum or where all the seats are, where the auction is placed. We can do it online and compete or, or bid on the plant material just like everyone else that's in the theater. So uh, this option of ordering plants via the internet through the uh, auction clock in Burnaby uh, allowed us to bring in a lot more plant material to Saskatchewan that uh, people in Saskatchewan never really had access to. So it's really helped our business grow. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Dutch Growers in Regina, Saskatchewan. As you can see, the Dutch traditions of growing plants has continued on uh, in far reaches of, of different parts of Canada. And uh, I really appreciate my Dutch heritage and, and, uh, and I'm glad my parents immigrated to Canada to, to help continue this tradition of, of horticulture in the Canadian, uh, in the hard, harsh Canadian conditions. So thank you very much for joining us here and uh, I wish you all the well in the new year. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Ik ben Katja, hallo. Hi. Hartelijk Hi. gefeliciteerd. Dank je wel. We zijn hier bij de Rocky Awards ja. en je hebt een Rocky gewonnen. Ja. Vertel eens wat dat is. Ja, nou, het is een award voor de. Het um, zegt Award of Excellence in Media Campaigns for Social Good. En wat heb jij, wat heb jij gemaakt? Ja, wij, wij, ik ben de executive director van een uh, mensenrechtenorganisatie. En uh, wij, doen, wij helpen mensenrechten uh, advocates om video te gebruiken, om hun verhalen te vertellen, om daarmee verandering te gebruiken. En zijn dat mensen vooral in wat wij vroeger derde wereldlanden noemden? Niet alleen, dat is juist wel heel leuk. Want we werken in Afrika en we werken in Azië, maar we werken bijvoorbeeld ook nu heel veel in Amerika. In Amerika en ook ja. in Canada? Ja. Nou, we hebben nog geen campagne in Canada, maar ik weet zeker dat het wel zou kunnen. Um, bijvoorbeeld iemand zei tegen mij, waarom werken jullie niet in Amerika? Toen zei ik, nou, als jullie het vinden, willen we het graag doen. We hebben bijvoorbeeld nu net een campagne gedaan die gaat over um, 
oudere mensen in Amerika die hebben heel veel lijden, heel veel onder abuse. Dus, uh, dus het is heel mooi om ook te laten zien dat er ook problemen in Amerika zijn en niet alleen maar in Afrika. En ik ben Belgische, dus ik kan me voorstellen, wij hebben een heel groot uh, interesse aan Congo en de Democratische Republiek ja, Congo. Ben je daar ja. ook actief? Ja, heel veel. Uh, de jongen die ons hoofd is, de program director voor uh, Afrika en Middle East, is een Congolese human rights activist. Dus we hebben een campagne gedaan in Congo, waar we gewerkt hebben met kindsoldaten. En we hebben filmpjes gemaakt waar zij hun verhaal hebben verteld. En dat verhaal dat gaat over... Wat er met hun gebeurt als ze eenmaal in die militias zitten. En met die film hebben we twee dingen gedaan. We zijn naar de International Criminal Court gegaan. En we hebben gezegd, er is een man, heet Thomas Lubanga, die moet gearresteerd worden. In Den Haag dus? In Den Haag, ja. ja. En we hebben dus echt gelobbyd. En met video heb je een heel ander effect. Hè? Het is heel anders dan als wanneer er een, gewoon een document op iemands, op iemands desk belandt. En dat, dit is echt een heel, een heel persoonlijk verhaal. Dus er was een video en dan zag je een truck. En dan zag je achterin jongens met... Guns in die militias en dat, dat je, je moet onder 15 zijn, want dan is het een war crime onder de, onder de internationale community. En ze keek naar de video en zei, is this one under 15, is this one under 15. Dus het was heel bijzonder. Maar het is dan in retrospect uh, verteld, dus uh, reenacted of is dat in real time? Nee, nee. Nee, die video's die waren precies wat er echt gebeurde in de Congo. En die video's hebben wij toen naar Den Haag gebracht, naar de International Criminal Court. Ja. Prachtig. Ja. En waar kunnen wij mensen, dus wij, dat, dat zijn Nederlanders in ja. uh, Vancouver, in BC, ja. in Canada, ja. maar ook natuurlijk Nederlanders ja. en Vlamingen thuis. Ja. Waar kunnen wij jullie, jouw filmen en jouw campagnes zien? Nou ja, ik denk het beste is altijd naar de website witness.org. Uh, of onze Facebookpage, als je kijkt naar Witness. En het is altijd heel fijn als mensen meedoen. We hebben een enorme community. We hebben de grootste Twitter following van alle mensenrechtenorganisaties. We willen graag dat mensen ook hun opinie geven en kijken naar video's en vertellen ons wat je ervan vindt. Oké, okay, dat zullen ja. we doen en jullie ook thuis. Ja. Dankjewel Yvette Dankjewel. en nog een prettige avond. Ja, het wordt leuk van. vanavond. Ja. Succes. Dankjewel. Ja. And here's another episode of the 10 days cycling through Holland. in Holland is you ain't Very much if you ain't Dutch. Dutch. The Pilgrim Fathers came over to Holland, first to Amsterdam and afterwards to Leiden uh, because they were their life not safe anymore in England because of their special belief. And we have this freedom of belief. This is where the magic happens, huh? It's the master. This is the master. <laughs> okay. So these are all here. Okay, you put okay. in the batter first. Take a look at it. Put the batter in. Uh, see here, the batter is it's, it's quite thin. Look, look here, now he's putting the apple on. Look at this. And I love how you guys cut the apple here. I thought it was pineapple. Yeah, <laughs> most most people think that. I didn't order the pineapple. Right? Yeah. Or the, the apple. It's really a skill. Woo! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that was awesome! <laughs> This is enormous. I cannot <laughs> wait to dig into it. <laughs> no, no, no way. Pancake the size of my head.
crack up the pancake, man. <laughs> <laughs> that one's <Yeah>. yours. <laughs> Wait, there it is. Aaron's pancake. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be okay. <laughs> well, that's our show for this week. Katya. Thanks, Tom. We are independent producers and we don't receive any funding or grants. So if you would like to support us, go to our website and click on donations. Don't forget you can follow us as well on Twitter and on Facebook. And you can also speak to your friends the old fashioned way. That's it. I think we need to find some shelter now. Yep. Have a good week. Have a Bye. good week and tot volgende week.